ready for the f the great cleansing, dude. Cleansing? The cleansing. What cleansing? When we genocide conservatives in this country. Are you gonna be on the streets with your Glock? Maybe. I gotta go back to Nebraska and grab it. John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off Kami. My name is John Doyle, and what you just watched there before the intro is a really interesting clip of this little beta male named Stephen Bonnell, and he goes by the name of Destiny, and uh, basically this guy makes a living playing video games and is also outspokenly far left, which is interesting because I don't know that you'd be able to play video games for a living under a collectivist economy, but I digress. So what he's talking about here is something that's actually much more common than you would like to believe, which is essentially that... It's the belief that has manifested on the radical left that in order to create an inclusive, egalitarian society, conservatives are going to have to be removed. They don't believe in conversation. They reject enlightenment values of reasoning, just totally removed. And I wonder if he actually has a Glock, too. So many rappers have romanticized Glocks just because it rhymes with a lot of other words. Now, everyone's hopping on the bandwagon just because of uh, the mainstream cultural recognition that it has now. I doubt he even has one. I doubt that he could even comprehend the impact that the G17 had on the integration of polymer handguns. But uh, I'm going to play a clip. Uh, where he tries to explain his rationale for acceptable violence against other people here. We agree that we can take defensive measures. Generally, everyone in here probably agrees with the concept of self-defense. Um, I'm merely expanding that to a political realm. If you feel like your existence is threatened in the United States, then there are people that definitely feel like they can take defensive actions against it. Um, I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with that. If you can justify your position morally, then it is what it is. This is actually reminding me about how we have to talk about postmodernism at some point. That's the key to understanding all of this, because... What he's doing there is he's making a case for subjectivism and for subjective morality. And we hear this a lot and we think, what? No, this guy, is he, is he crazy? But in actuality, this is by design. The postmodernist interpretation of epistemology is fundamentally that of social subjectivism, whereas the modernist interpretation would be experience and reason is what would distinguish a justified belief from an opinion. Destiny doesn't believe in that. Destiny believes that the individual can decide whether or not they should act violently against other people instead of an objective system by which we have objective standards of morality. And... Some of that would justify violence. For example, violence against pedophiles is something that I think we can all objectively agree on. I think we can all agree that pedophilia is objectively bad. But guess who doesn't agree? For example, do you disavow child pornography? Well, I'd have to see the data. Well, I'd have to take a look at a study. I'd have to get some, uh, some guy in a lab coat to tell well, me. Well, we can't all take our moral truths from God. So, yeah, I would have to actually, actually analyze can. things and think about them. We I don't just can. read the Bible for my moral truths. Can you imagine any instance where you would be accused of endorsing child pornography and you wouldn't immediately say, no, no, I do not. And then... He tries, to, he tries to take a shot at Nick Fuentes, who's the guy that he's talking to, by saying, well, not all of us can take our moral truths from God, so yeah, I'd have to look into it. Like, I can't even imagine that. And you don't have to be a Christian to know that child pornography is quite literally the most evil form of exploitation that exists on the planet. And this person just can't acknowledge that. In fact, he actually gets defensive about it if you watch the clip. Well, we can't all take our moral truths from God. And there are a lot of people, radically left people, that believe that pedophilia should be okay. And I'm not going to pretend that that's everybody, that's not what I said, but... Yeah, and also a lot of LGBT people have come out against this, rightfully so. But the logical conclusion of a society that promotes hedonism that says, hey, if it feels good, do it. I won't judge. I won't, I won't be judgmental. Just live your life. The logical conclusion of a society that starts to flirt with the idea of subjective morality is a society in which this type of behavior will have a faction of people pushing for it to be normalized under the name of tolerance and acceptance. And that's actually... That's what we were supposed to talk about, uh, tolerance and intolerance. So basically, ignoring the ideological roots of this whole thing that we will readdress in a later discussion, let's talk about something that's called the tolerance paradox, or the paradox of tolerance. For those of you not familiar, it was described by a philosopher named Karl Popper in 1945 in his book, The Open Society and Its Enemies, and it basically states that in order to maintain a tolerant society, we have to be intolerant of people that are intolerant, because if we are tolerant to the people who are intolerant, then eventually they will take control and the society will no longer be tolerant. Stay with me because this gets really cringeworthy really fast. So the left takes this concept and they use it to justify their intolerance of any opinion that doesn't match theirs. And as our pal Destiny said, it's up for the individual to decide for themselves what justifies violence or intolerance. Therefore, if you don't like what someone says, you have the ability to decide if they should be allowed to say it. And then, of course, the logical conclusion would be the complete abolition of the freedom of speech, or at least 
the concept of hate speech manifesting as a legal precedent. And they're so consumed by this ideology that they actually feel morally obligated to shut you down if you disagree with them. They feel as if violence against Trump supporters and conservatives in general is justified because you're intolerant. And therefore, you have to be eliminated in order to maintain society, which is why we have to punch Nazis. Like, sure, but who gets to decide who the Nazis are? Usually actual Nazis are just honest about it. But what you guys do is you just equate conservatism and Nazism together, which then makes it okay by your own logic to suppress conservative of ideas or even assault conservatives in their eyes beating a conservative with a bike locker pouring urine on a conservative oh, 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 oh my god is the same thing as freddie overseggen joining the dutch resistance during world war ii and shooting nazis from her bicycle before she was 18. that's what they think they're doing they are that disengaged with reality they are that cognitively dissonant doesn't matter if you get hurt doesn't matter if you die as destiny said the means justify the ends and the ends is their perfectly egalitarian utopian society that they can pretend exists anywhere except in widely disputed works of political theory and they think they're so smart for this like there are actually leftist instagram accounts that post occupied democrats type content that are named after this tolerance paradox like oh my god get over yourself like hey maybe you shouldn't throw a bitch fit when someone disagrees with you and they're like oh honey you simply haven't heard of the tolerance paradox, have you? It's like in the Matrix when Neo's offered the pills. Like, if you take the red pill, I'll show you just how deep the scope of our idiocy goes. Except that's actually like a blue pill a thought framework. But anyways, so uh, another one they spread around the internet is a quote from a guy named Ellie Weisel that says, We must always take sides. Neutrality helps the oppressor, never the victim. Silence encourages the tormentor, never the tormented. And they use this to feel really empowered. Like, no, I'm not just pathologically overreacting to everything I see on Twitter because my life is too comfortable and I need something meaningful to fight for. I'm actually better than you because I'm not allowing myself to take the side of the oppressor. I'm turning the wheels of history. I reply to every single one of Trump's tweets with, with a clever insult. I make clever and decorative signs for the protests that I only attend on occasion, but I'm fighting fascism. I'm fighting tyranny. I am Katniss Everdeen. Oh my God. They actually, they, that's another thing they do. Like you cannot make this up. This is actually so cringe. They're LARPing. They're like, we were raised on Harry Potter and Hunger Games. What did you think was going to happen? Do you remember the types of kids that would read those books? I mean, don't get me wrong. I like them. But the kids that would get through the five or 600 page Harry Potter book within like days of its release, they're the ones that are going to overthrow this evil government. Maybe if they took a walk through the nonfiction section of Barnes and Noble, they would make the connection between the nation of Pan Am and totalitarian socialism. Maybe they would realize, oh, wait a second. Katniss was fighting against a socialist regime. And wait a minute. The regime was socialist as a means to keep the people impoverished, not to empower them. Hmm, fancy that. And they ask the other thing. That guy, uh, Ellie Weisel, he was a Holocaust survivor. He saw what actual intolerance is. The philosopher that coined the idea of the tolerance paradox, that was in his book in which he heavily criticized Karl Marx and Hegel, and he made a strong case for liberal democracies like the United States. And I've said that before. People are like, John, the United States isn't a liberal democracy. It's a constitutional republic. True. But that still falls under the umbrella of a liberal democracy. A liberal democracy can also manifest as a constitutional monarchy like we see in Japan or Canada. Same umbrella. But anyways, he also went ahead and wrote that the thinking of Karl Marx and those like him is the root of 20th century totalitarianism. Yes, obviously. But they ignore all that, assuming they even know about it. And they just take the part completely out of context, by the way. And then they just get to use that to silence things they don't like. Uh, because, of course... They are postmodernists and they don't believe in objective interpretations. And I hate that. When you compare a genocide to a president that you don't like, you don't actually sensationalize it to a degree on which you can honestly claim that Trump is a fascist dictator. You dilute the actual significance of the genocide because anyone who slept through half of an eighth grade U.S. history class could tell you that the two are not alike at all. Uh, so my understanding is you want to clear the air because you think you're being unfavorably compared to Donald Trump. Don't get me wrong, Conan, I agree with a lot he says, a lot. Like 90% of what he says, I'm like, this guy gets it. Okay. <laughs> what they do, at least the ones who aren't as mainstream they do this, is they say, one, we have to silence the voice of the oppressors because otherwise they will oppress. And two, Trump supporters want to oppress you and are Nazis, but they often don't have the balls to state the logical conclusion aloud, which is three. Silence the voice of Trump supporters, because if they did, people would be like, wait a minute, that doesn't sound okay. So they just throw out the first two points so that idiots put them together and then give birth to Antifa. You guys actually think you're Dumbledore's army fighting off this oppressive regime that wants to strip your rights away. No, you're fighting for what 93% of the media wants, what all of Hollywood wants, et cetera, et cetera. You're fighting for what most of academia wants, specifically 
within the humanities. And most importantly, you're fighting for what the establishment wants because you guys are easily stimulated idiots that could be manipulated to serving the higher interest of dividing the country and expanding government to such a level that we're all dependent on the state. Absolute clown world, you idiot. Stop LARPing. Hey guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and leave a comment with your thoughts. Don't tell me I look like Ash Ketchum in the Space Force, the Space Force getup that I've got here. I'm aware. Uh, it's very colorful. I like it. Red, white, and blue, obviously. But at the same time, I do look like Ash Ketchum. So there's that. Thank you so much for watching. May God bless America.